ever since I was very young, so in primary school, after I went on the holiday with my family, we came back and I missed a month of school, but I used to get so anxious going into school that I would often throw up before I got to school and to take extra sit days. So that's probably the earliest memories I have of dealing with anxiety. Then later on, I dealt with anxiety and depression after one of my friends younger sister committed suicide and that was when I really sort of slipped down into a mental health spiral which included depression and anxiety at the same time. Now currently after my diagnosis I am stable so that's really good on medications but if I get overly anxious so if I kind of push past the point of breaking down that's mainly anxiety feelings and I can start to hallucinate. Getting help, I've done therapies, I've done talking therapies, I've gone to cooking classes in particular therapy groups, and we used to exercise with them. I fidget a lot, so I often like would have a fidget spinner or a fidget cube and toy with that. Taking breaks to have breathers often helps if I'm getting really anxious and need to leave the classroom. Other coping mechanisms, hanging out with friends and family, trying to acknowledge more often when I have good thoughts rather than bad thoughts. So then you have a bank of memories where you've thought good things instead of just having a bank of memories where you've thought negative things. That really helps. So one of the biggest things I think is our environment and some of those big factors that have happened within the last 10 years, such as the earthquakes, the mosh shootings, COVID, and on top of that, just general everyday stuff that we face, that young people face. I think sometimes it can be really difficult for youth who uh, don't have a lot of support and who have unresolved trauma, which can come to light later on, especially in the youth years or teenage years. I think it's quite silly, like statistically 10% of the population is bipolar, that is men and women. Over 40% of the population has had um, experiences with depression. So for something that's actually rather ordinary, it's not, it's treated as quite extraordinary or out of the ordinary. I personally haven't had too much stigma being in educational institutions and they've got specific services for people in my um, case. Lately I haven't found anyone negative or had any negative comments. That it's okay to not be okay. Every time you're okay, not okay, you don't have to beat yourself up, up about it. It isn't what defines you and with proper treatment and help you can still have a great quality of life. We all are human, we all go through different things in our lives, but most importantly it's about owning it because usually when I own it, it allows me to settle and I'm not constantly in my head and I just feel what I'm feeling and I'm okay with that. Talking to your peers, talking to your friends, talking to counsellors, anyone that gives you the support that you need is super important in terms of healing through your own anxiety. Using that as a strength because for so long I always saw it as a weakness, but it's my biggest strength without my anxiety and without my own journey of mental distress, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'm way more resilient, I'm more hardworking, and I know as soon as my anxiety comes through, I know something's happening within my world that I need to change. Acknowledge it, own it, talk to people, understand it, allow your body or your mind to do its thing. You have what it takes to get through it, and if not, just reach out to someone that who can, who can support you.